Hello, everyone. Welcome to 360 Degrees Excellence, where we believe everyone who can have all-round success. Today, I'm going to be having a conversation with my very good friend, Mr. Olufemi Nelson Fajolu. And we're going to be talking about the benefits of DIY, do it yourself. Mr. Fajolu is a research scientist with Department of Human Services with uh, the state of Minnesota, United States of America. So without wasting time, I just want him to tell us about himself. I know him well, but I want him to tell us, my viewers, about himself, where he was born, uh, what he's doing right now, where he lives, and everything he would like to share. Over to you, Organesen. <laughs> Yeah, good morning, sir. Uh, good morning, viewers. Uh, as you have heard, uh, my name is Olufemi Nelson Fajolu. Uh, um, a lot of my friends call me Femi. Uh, Actually, I, I added Nelson to my name. Like, um, he's my personal name. Uh, he's my personal human hero. Uh, I love his simplicity. I love his and I love the fact that uh, when he had the opportunity to, uh, to speak, to stay on in government, uh, with his power, even though he could have won that election. So that is uh, my personal view about that. Uh, it is not, you don't do everything that you have the power to do. So that's that about Nelson Mandela. So I live here in um, I work for the state government, actually. Uh, I work for uh, the Department of Human Services as a research scientist, uh, basically focusing on uh, performance data. So I work with all the local counties. Like, uh, uh, we call them local governments in Africa. Uh, uh, so we, the state government hold the local government to start in place of performance I'm in charge of uh, pulling data uh, that looks into those performance and making sure that they, uh, they meet the performance challenges. I recommend some of them for performance improvement plans that which we have to develop from this to the state government and we have to also those uh, PIT and uh, make sure that some of the local counties are That's why. Yeah, that's why when I when I talk about African, this thing is not difficult. Like, it's not terribly difficult. Like you just have to uh, hold people accountable, starting threshold performance. That's that's what it is completely work. So I I married to my to my college teacher. I will be making footer. Name is uh, Doctor Lucy. We have three girls, Oluwani, Bob, Oluwani, Ben, and Trey. Wow. So when I'm not working, I'm fixing something in the house. I'm listening in the house six, six months. And I'm not fixing something. I love to play with those girls to fight. So like play wrestling, boxing, and sometimes play basketball. So that's that about me. Powerful. Thank you so much. Uh, did you tell us about uh, working for Target? You told me what you learned there. You worked at Target. And you told yeah, me I you did, learned I did, something. Yeah, I, did, I didn't work at Target. Um, uh, actually, that was my first corporate job in America. Um, so I, I, uh, I don't know. I learned, I learned, I learned a lot of things from Target. Uh, it's not about the outward look. Uh, I feel like uh, uh, you have to get in to know what's going on. So I don't want to say more. Because, uh, okay, 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 okay. That that is fantastic. You are someone that likes DIY. Uh, yeah. You know, I remember when I visited your house in um, Minnesota. Uh, yeah. You add, added, you know. Uh, into the balcony, yeah, yeah, yeah. basement, and uh, you did certain things. 
And there was a time you're also into farming. You know, you like doing things yeah. by yourself. Um, why do you like DIY, DIY and, and what do you think are the benefits? Uh, what have you benefited from DIY? <laughs> yeah, first of all, the benefits, I'll take the second question. Uh, the benefits are, are, are enormous. Uh, I'm, I'm personally uh, I'm someone that believes that um, there, are various, there are various ways you can make money. And one of those ways is by not spending money. Understand me? So I believe that I can make money without by not spending money. So uh, because a lot of these things, I'm going to tell you how I learned them. Uh, if you know how to do them, they are not terribly and the labors are the, the labor are fee extremely extremely high because for if you for example if you purchase a material like if you want to build a house and you purchase the material for two hundred dollars for example the labor is going to be two and a half times two hundred dollars like almost five hundred dollars so so if I I know everything I purchase on any project as building is concerned. I have all the tools. So, uh, so sometimes they're like, well, the only thing remaining is labor. Why do I have to go pay $500 for something? I have the tools, I know the materials, and all I need is time. So, I just invest my, my weekends, my time after work. And I do enjoy them. My, my, my family is invited. Like I said, they have to me the statistics. So, so that's that about the benefit. It gives me joy, it keeps me at home, it keeps me out of trouble. And of course, like I said, it makes, I, I save a lot of money. I save yeah. a lot of money. Yeah. So our the journey began actually in 2013 when we were going to buy our first house, well, which is the house where you where where you the family thing. So uh, we were living like uh, an hour away from that Area, but that was where my wife was working. So it became very tough. The, the commute commute was very, very tough. So we were looking for houses around that area. And and it was it was extremely difficult to drive one hour to come and look for look at one house where I really can call them. Oh, I found a house. We'll go there and it wouldn't be the, the one we love. So there's this brother in the church. Uh, who, who claims to be to be a contractor um, where I verified everything and discovered that he, he, he actually had a company. But uh, this, I think I shared the story with you before. And yeah. Mm -hmm. he, he ended up being a very appointed contractor because the company he claimed to have wasn't his own. Uh, the buildings he claimed to have built. They were built by that company, but it, it wasn't the one that supervised it. And so it, it, it almost put us in trouble. Uh, a, financial, a lot of financial problems. Thank God and thank uh, goodness that uh, we had living savings there because it became so difficult that the bank stopped because of his irregularities and lack of integrity and rudeness. The bank stopped funding the project. Uh, from the loan that we got, I have to personally fund that project for my pocket and use some credit cards to buy material. So that we can take the house. All the other options is the bank to take over the, the house, uh, uh, foreclose on it, and that will cost me because that means seven years I will not be able to buy another house. So that was when I had to get involved fully. So when I get to places where the place where I work with, the guy is extremely responsible. He will say workers are coming, they will not come. Even when they come, he will not come. So I will just go there, take time off from work. I will be supervising this worker. Then when I saw what they were doing, what they were doing, I will just take one of their tools. I will start uh, practicing with them. <laughs> then I, I heard several comments like, oh, you are, you are I like your uh, work ethic. Let me teach you this. Let me teach you that. Let me teach you this. Let me teach you that. <laughs> so a lot of this, I became friends with a lot of the, the laborers, and they will they, my wife will cook for them from our one hour away house. I will bring the food, and we'll be working there all day on the place. 
I'll be working with them. If you if you arrive there, you will not even know who has who <laughs> is going to be out. You understand me? We'll be working with them. So that's where they started teaching me how to frame a house, how to install this, how to install that. <clears throat> so by the time we excuse me, something came up. By the time we finished the house eventually, um, the, the, the financing company uh, gave us a lot of uh, a lot of uh, a very high interest rate, which I knew I could have gotten a better interest rate. But they took advantage of the fact that we had issues that could come up on top. So I felt that the only way I could I could reduce that's another thing that our people have, have to learn. The only way I could reduce my monthly payment was to make sure that I I brought down that interest rate. And then that's what we call PMI, private mortgage insurance. If you buy purchase a house and the the amount of equity that you have in that house is not up to 20 percent of the value of that house. For example, if your house was four hundred thousand and you don't have up to maybe eighty thousand in equity, that means you don't have 80,000 equity. Equity means that after, after if, for example, they sold the house and the bank takes their own, the equity is the amount that is left. Yeah. For example, if your house is worth 400,000 and they sold it and you are owing the bank, for example, 320,000, that means yeah. about 20% of the value of the house. Mm. So, but if you don't have up to 20%, you have to pay what they call PMI, which is private mortgage insurance. So we were forced to be paying PMI, which is another extra, I think, $460 per month on top of our mortgage. I felt that the only way I could I could take that off, uh, stop pay, making that, that payment is to finish my basement so that I can, when I finish my basement, the value of my house will go up. And then I will be able to go back to the bank and say, okay, the value of this house has gone up. So come and play a crazy. So I, that even my wife did not believe me. That felt my, my my ability to do that. It's like, oh, go now the house. Now. Said, we have the insurance on the house anyway. So, so I started framing the basement one wood at a time. I actually used my, my little I would buy five wood, I would buy ten wood. So I, then that I think the Christmas of that year I told her what I wanted to do was the framing done. So like below here is what we use for so hammer thing is not a hammer we use in Africa. So we have a, I have one. So we have a framing gun, like in five minutes you can build an entire wall. So, so I, she purchased a framing gun for me. I, will, I, will, I was framing the basement when it was time to do the electrical. I invited a friend to help me to build. Then I, I jumped on YouTube. I watched people how to do electrical in the basement. When it comes to doing the heating and uh, the age, call it age back, uh, heating and air condition, I, I watched it on YouTube, I watched it and I did it at a special scale because here yeah, you can't do anything like that without getting a uh, CD permit. So, which means the inspector will have to come at every stage or certain stages of the project to come and inspect it. So, when they inspected it, they will pass it or they will tell you you need to fix this. So, that's how I did my basement. And I was able to go back to the bank and I said, wow, I finished my basement. You guys need to come and do another appraisal. So thank goodness they did the appraisal. The value of the house has turned up comparable mm -hmm. to the amount of loan that we had with them. So that means I was able to save the $170 with just giving to them for PMI. And not only that, I, I actually was able to tell them that I wanted lower interest so, so they took, they gave me a lawyer, of course, they approved it. So they, my payment, my mortgage payment came down from like $2,400 per month to $1,600. That is a lot. So, exactly. So when I said, uh, you, in DIY, you make money by not spending. Mm. So what I did yeah. uh, to us, for us as a family, actually, was like, we were able to keep paying extra Three hundred dollars on top of our mortgage, and yeah, this is something like these are people, but that's not. Mm -hmm. But you're able to pay extra month, extra principal in addition to the mortgage you're paying every month. That means you are not going to spend thirty years paying off the loan. Yeah, 
Mm. A lot of the case, 20, 30 years. So when we actually saw the house, I think we just moved there about 2017. But we saw the house in August. It was that turned out to be a very good job for us because mm. what it did was it gave us a lot of equipment that we were able to put down in this new house. This is our current house, it's actually a brand new one. And, and, but we didn't use the Nigeria contract for this time around. <laughs> this time around, you learned your lesson. <laughs> So we use we use a professional company that one of the actually top two top two company in the real estate company industry. So they are called the our office. They'll do our current house. That 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 is interesting. Yeah. But so but, that, I, that, I, I, but, but but I believe there are some Nigerians contractors that are doing good job. Oh, absolutely, absolutely. Okay. I, I will be the last person. I will be the last person to capture all the. This guy, this guy that that I engaged, I engaged him primarily because he's a Nigerian. First of all, first my wife didn't really like when he was talking. Yeah, he's, he's, he's one of us. He, and secondly, we we are members of the same church. So like mm. we we want to do something like this, and we have a member of our church who's also a member of our community who said to. Who, who claim to be doing why not just test the man? His problem is not that the problem is not that he is a Nigerian. That's not the problem. The problem is that yeah. he is a fraudulent person. Because yeah. the company he used was was not actually his company. Registered. So they are, and that's actually when I eventually met the guy that owned the company, who is also a Nigerian, Ibo man, like, who is my friend his brother. He was the guy that didn't let me take them to court as in the owner of the company. Okay. That able man, they are friends. If I call him now, he will come to me. So he is a, he's an extremely nice guy. He, when, he, when I get back, when I give back to come to my house, when he get back to his despite what the company did to, to me, because I could have easily sued their company, he will be in trouble. And the and that way I will because I can't sue. Based in the US, based on what is going on in the US, I can't sue that guy directly, the guy that yeah. I us. I can't sue him. I can only sue the company. But if mm. an attempt to sue that company and discover that I will be hurting this guy. So mm. that's why I just let everything go and mm. let fix the things. Because a lot, it's not just the, the fact that I didn't do the job. A lot of the things they did the house mm. wasn't perfect. I had to buy several things, spend several hours fixing stuff. Repenting the house and so many things. But the good news is, I, I gained the skill. So it was a journey of pain to gain from me. So I, that's why it doesn't bother me. Uh, uh, mm. How's the house? Yeah. That. <laughs> uh, but, but I'm sure, although it was an unfortunate event, uh, but it, it made you to be serious about doing, doing it yourself. Yeah. And yeah. you've learned a lot of things from that yeah. thing yeah. that happened, that unfortunate event that happened. Um, but what I'm just thinking about DIY is, is very, very important in overseas, people like you living in the US, in Europe. But in Africa, sometimes you don't want to do it yourself because you are thinking about the people that are suffering, small businesses, and you're thinking, instead of me doing this thing, by myself, let me help them. Let me pay for them. Sometimes, okay, maybe instead of washing my car, I, I will take it out. Let those guys, small businesses, to wash it for me. Or instead of barbing my hair by myself, okay, let me go to the barbing shop to help, you know, the small businesses. But in the US, things are expensive. Yeah. You know, in, in, in South Africa or in Nigeria, if you go to gas station, uh, you don't do it yourself. There is a guy, <laughs> you just sit down in your car, a guy will just, <laughs> yeah, when he, that, that you, know, you guys go out, yeah. you know, you fill your tank yourself. So yeah. Yeah. it comes down to labor. It comes down to labor. Um, yeah. Uh, like you said, in, in Nigeria, I, actually, I, I was visiting Nigeria in 2017, and I was uh, in one of my aunt's house. Her generator got damaged, and they brought this guy to fix the generator. He got, <laughs> Spent four hours fixing the generator, mm. <laughs> and and they gave my was going to give him five hundred naira 
dignity in labor. I remember when I was at, you know, I was at um, University of Manitoba recently, uh, the guy that was in my lab um, doing his master's, um, he told me that um, when they were young, they also told them, the parents told them to learn something. I think he learned carpentry. You know, in, in like in Africa, we tell our girls to learn maybe fashion. Yeah. You know, you tell them to learn from fashion. But you see, people that are learning, they think that if I tell my child to go and learn, a boy to go and learn carpentry, to go and learn uh, plumbing is a dirty work. Yeah. But yeah. in those places, uh, like in the US, they don't see it that way. And no. um, and I think that's, we should begin to think about that, that um, this type of uh, skills too are, are so important. Or maybe I should call it crafts. Are so, are so important. Yeah, they are just important. They are, like, for example, any child that leaves high school in the US already has one school. That's why you see the um, graduate rate, as in not graduate, people with, people with college university degree in the US, they are just 35% mm. of the population. Yeah. They are just 35%, mm. but in Nigeria, you have up close to 60, 70% mm. of people being, being graduate. So in mm. the US, it's just 35%, because by the time they leave high school, like for example, my daughter is in middle school. She already knows a lot of things: knitting, painting, what a few babysitting. So that and so when many of these people are in school, they already have a skill, at least computer skill. Yeah. Me, typing and all that, all that they are able to type perfectly by the time they leave high school. And you can go work in, in an office as office assistant. Making minimum wage, which is like twelve dollars. That's why you see a lot of them like, okay, if I'm making minimum wage now as a seventeen year old. I can grow with this company and eventually make more by the time I'm twenty five, thirty. Then I can yeah. buy my own house and all that. So that's that's another thing that we need to focus on. In yeah, yeah. We need yeah. to go back to it. remember in those days when we were. Yeah, I think it's good. Uh, we can go to university and have degrees. But I think it's also good that we should learn some of these crafts, uh, plumbing, you know, carpentry, all those things. 
there should be dignity in labor. I, you know, I met, I met, I met, you know, I learned a lot of things when I was in North America. I met these two guys, you know, I once said I wanted to become an engineer. The guy said, you know, I wanted to become a, a, a carpenter. And it was so, it was, it, it, it didn't feel bad that his friend wanted to become the, the, the yeah, friend yeah. of Indian origin, he's, he's a Caucasian. The guy said, the, the, the guy of India said, I wanted to become an engineer. He said, I want to become a carpenter. And, mm -hmm. um, and, and I told the guy, I said, look, ah, it's interesting. Jesus too was a carpenter when he was in yeah. the world. You know, that kind of a thing. Yeah, so there should be yeah. dignity in labor. <laughs> yeah, that's one thing I, I, you know, I, I, I talk about Nigeria a lot. That's one thing I, even including, unfortunately, some of our pastors, when they talk about it, it's like, so oh, a lot of people do odd jobs. I'm like, it's odd job. You understand me? Like you said, it is about dignity. You, like, you see a lot of graduates in Africa that, that graduated from university, they actually have to live with their parents. Mm. You understand me? And what is more, what is more less dignified than a 25, 30 year old man still living with parents, yeah. not yeah. not bringing in money? So, for example, mm. if you let that person do whatever they can do, they are going to do. And um, they're able to rent their own house because a typical minimum wage in the US can rent to our own house, can buy, might not buy a new car, but can buy a new car. Yeah, yeah. And possibly even get married, depending on the kind of uh, job you are doing. You know, so so I, 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 I fight and I speak out strongly against people that are cause of jobs, all jobs, but no job is jobs. Every job is all about who you are. About you being able to bring food for your family. Mm -hmm. I, yeah. I teach it to my, my children. No yeah. something, learn something. As a matter of fact, uh, a lot of my. Um, I, was, I was talking to my aunt recently. She has four children, and the first one studies English language in Nigeria, of course. Uh, but she's also a, a hairdresser. She learns because their mom uh, works as a hairdresser. So the first one, Learns here just in the second born, because that one is like school, a first class in uh, applied chemistry. She's looking for grad graduate program. Mm -hmm. The third one uh, studied microbiology, but she's also a tailor. But mm -hmm. I'm, I'm in the process of setting up a job for her. Mm -hmm. She has not found a job. Like, you can't be sitting at home. You have, you have skills. But you have skills. You have skills. You have skills. But the job hasn't yeah. come. You have your other skills. The, the yeah. last born is Daniel. Uh, is is important level, but he already had a shop where he where he bath, he walked yeah. at the barber and he set up his own thing. You understand me? And yeah. now he doesn't even bother his parents. So, so that's it. That's, 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 that's where we need to go back. To. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Entrepreneurship is all about entrepreneurship because yeah. if you are into fashion, you are an entrepreneur. If you are a barbing, uh, if you have a barbing salon, you are an entrepreneur. It's, we need to really tell our young people to do that. And they should know that that is not the state they are going to be. If they are starting at, as a small entrepreneur, they can become big. They can even get a job later and, and go back yeah, to entrepreneurship. Yeah, 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 yeah. So that kind of thing. You've been in the US for about 10 years now, or more than 10 years. Uh, I think and, it will be 16 years. By, hmm. Actually, 16 years by this April. April 16, 16 years. Yeah, yeah. You know, I, I know a lot of people that want to relocate to the US and, um, uh, I want to ask you, what do you wish someone uh, could have told you immediately you arrived in the U.S., immediately you immigrated to the U.S.? <laughs> well, in my own case, um, I would say I was lucky because I came to the U.S. fully uh, with my green card. So uh, I, that means I could choose to do whatever I want to do. Uh, I could live wherever I want to. So um, I think I got a lot of advice in my own case. I, I got because I got the advice of some people saying don't go to school, go to school, don't do don't do grad school, don't do grad school, go and learn somebody was saying, go and learn how to fix uh, elevator, uh, which is good because if you know how to fix elevator in the US, you can come in, especially if you're able to start your own company. So, but uh, I think in my own case, I would say I trusted people too much. Because, and that's who I am. It, it first, my first impression about everybody is to, is to trust them for 
that's how I got into trouble with the guy that moved to my house. Yeah. And I to trust you. And, but now I, I have added, I've added another caveat, trust but verify. <laughs> so, <laughs> just about to verify. So uh, now I, I, so I wish I had uh, developed the sensibility of verifying what people are telling me. Because a lot of people will not give you the full information. I, I've had, I think, I've had like two families that live with me since I, I purchased my own house. And I am, you can talk to them. They have even purchased their own house. I see I have two other uh, relatives living with us, and family, which means that we have started buying our own house. We have actually not lived as a family. We have, we have had one person, two persons, a point for the family. So, so what I'm saying in essence is people will tell you a lot of things, but a lot of people will hide uh, the, the main information. Mm. So that's one thing I appreciate about a lot of our friends from the, from the Asian continent. They, like if you see an Asian person running a business, you will see all the employees are going to be on a A lot of our folks, they will not expose mm. The secret of yeah. the business. They were it. <laughs> yeah. yeah, but you don't blame them too. Like this guy that that fraud us, that fraud us, his friend trusted them with his company. Then when he went behind him, I used his company to, to get contracts that almost got the guy in trouble. Mm. So so it's it's yeah, it's two I understand. Ways, you understand it? It's two ways. So uh, we need to try like, talking about bombs. You know, we need to we need to go back to the bomb system and do our life. That our parents are capable to hold us accountable, our friends, our church members are capable of, are capable of holding us accountable. You can't just bring in a big car without explaining the source of the riches, you understand? Me? So, yeah. so I, 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 to be honest with you, I, to answer that question, I, I feel the main thing for me is what I need to have done, uh, make sure you verify what's about it. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that's interesting. What about the importance of um, credit rating? You know, a lot of people, uh, it was something that was telling me about that. Some people, yeah. when they get to the US, they don't want to get credit, you know, but Tosin was telling me something about credit rating, which is also yeah. applicable in South Africa. You know, South Africa yeah. is big on get credit. Mm -hmm. Can you just throw more light on that? Oh, yeah. Credit, in, in, in the US, everything is, is about your credit. I have two uh, two. A little bit of, I've started building, I told them. Um, again, I got good advice. So, if you want to buy a house, you want to buy a car, even use a phone, they're going to pull your credit. And if your credit, like now, if I, this is my phone, and if to sign a phone contract, they will pull my credit. For example, if my credit is good, they can give me that contract and I say, okay, keep paying every, every month. Two years, but if the credit is not good, they might say you need to deposit four hundred dollars. Yeah. So again, that's that's number one. That's the smallest part of it. the biggest part of it is if you are purchasing a house and your credit is not good. For example, I purchased my house here. Um, uh, I got an interest rate of two point six. So. Meanwhile, there are people that purchase their house and their interest rates are five percent. Hmm. So that is, if we purchase a house of the same value, they will be paying at least this. Based on my rough calculation, I would say they will be paying not less than four hundred dollars every month over what I'm paying now. So that is that is number one. Hmm. It, you you you'll be hurting yourself financially if you not take care of your credit. Secondly, like yesterday, I was going to buy, I was going to buy uh, uh, Lombard because I gave out our the Lombard we were using in the house. I gave it out to the friend I just to the house. I was going to buy a Lombard. So I, I just saw this credit card. They said, okay, apply for our credit card. We give you two hundred dollars. So I was going to buy a Lombard four hundred dollars. And they said, if you apply for our credit card, we'll give you two hundred dollars. If you if you spend five hundred dollars within the first month, I have the cash to purchase my normal, right? Mm -hmm. I have the cash. You understand mm -hmm. me? So 
I, I just applied for their credit card. Yeah. <laughs> I'll get the two hundred dollars. I'll pay. I'll pay. I'll, I'll, so that, Immediate, yeah. It, it comes down to your credit score. Everything yeah. comes down to your credit score, and that starts immediately. You get it. Don't mm. take unnecessary loan. Don't buy things you cannot afford. If you can talk to Brotosi, um, when I when I got to the when I when I when I came here in in twenty oh six, I told them, look, I am not going to buy TV. Guess what? My my first manager, uh, the company I buy, first company I work for, the manager is from Ethiopia. She called me, she called me to our office. She's like, brother, she calls me brother. She's like, don't buy TV. You don't need it. Your family is not here. <laughs> you see a lot of our people, they buy TVs in the house. Now I I work from home. I have to pay time off. When I started, I didn't have to pay time off. When I started, which means we don't go to work, don't make money. And a lot of our people are in that category. They will buy these giant TVs mm. that they don't wash. They become, mm. by the time you come back from work, you are by yourself. You are tired. You are lying. You will turn on the TV. But it's the TV that is washing you are not you washing mm. <laughs> because you are dozed off because you are tired. So yeah. she told me don't buy TV. And then I, I for several years until we started having TV, we didn't buy TV. We didn't buy TV. Mm -hmm. TV. And for now, as I, as I speak to you, I refuse to pay for cable. Cable, mm -hmm. as in cable TV. Cable TV costs about minimum eighty dollars a month. And if you want to get the, the advanced one, you could pay as much as $150 a month. I told Roto, say, I will never pay for cable. Because mm -hmm. all, all they do is fight each other on CNN, MSNBC. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I can get their videos. If I have internet in my house, I can watch yeah. the recorded mm -hmm. version of what they are saying. But mm -hmm. I have internet. All I do, mm -hmm. I only watch basically two things of news and sports. Mm. And I can get them, I can get the result of my sports. So I said I will not pay for cable. One hundred fifty dollars extra every month can go to my retirement. Yeah. Family. Mm. So that's why that's how I educate a lot of our people. And even the loan, even when you have big credit, you have to make sure that you approach somebody who can read the fine print. Mm. Let me give you an yeah. example. When I was going to buy my last car, I called the guy up. Okay, I called my bank. Well, okay, the car is this month, this is the amount I'm going to pay, I'm payment, and this is the amount I want to finance. And he just came back, okay, blah, 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 this is the amount you should be paying every month. Hmm. Okay, I, because I needed to take the car away from there, I kind of agreed. And when I got home, I pulled out my laptop and kind of round the number. This guy had added so many stuff that, that I didn't even need. You understand me? So yeah. which basically increased my monthly payment by another fifty five dollars. So I immediately hmm. sent him an email like I don't want your loan. By the time they got back to the office because it was late, by the time they got back to the office, following morning, he called me back. I'm like, why did you add this warranty? That warranty? I go, hmm. I get warranty from from people, and I have a lot of uh, I have people here. I I don't need some of these things you add. But then if you don't reach the fine point. Yeah, you don't but, know the, you know, the formula in Excel and, and other tools that you can use to calculate what you should be paying monthly. And a lot of our people are in that, in that, mm. in that, in that board, in that course. You know, they, they just take the paperwork, sign it, mm. sign it, and once you put your signature on that, the paperwork, yeah, it doesn't matter. <laughs> <laughs> you have to, you have to have yeah. So I, so you need to, you need to learn. You need to talk to people that are experienced. You need to talk to people that know. Not just credit for financing. I, I don't buy what I don't have money to pay right away. We, I use credit card, but I don't use credit card for something that I would not be able to pay back. I, 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 I so that's how you build your credit. And yeah. I, if I talk to the students that are living with us now, I make sure I, you you can have credit card, but use it. And as soon as you get your your um, uh, your your bill, pay it off. So yeah, yeah. What I mean is, don't buy things that you cannot pay off at the end of the year. I've been here for sixteen years. I've not paid one dollar in interest credit card bill. I've not paid one dollar on credit card. That's great. I will not use credit card for something 
that I would not be able to pay off. That is that's a good that's a good one. That's a good one. Yeah. yeah. Thank you so much. I really learned a lot from our uh, discussion today. Uh, what's your closing remark for us? Oh, well, I, I appreciate what you are doing. I watch all, a lot of your videos. And I think those are, those are, those are fantastic uh, knowledge that you are creating out there. Uh, like, you put them on YouTube. YouTube has saved me. I, I, I can't even account for it. So this thing might not become popular now. But I guarantee, maybe five years, ten years, maybe fifty years, maybe when you are no longer here, yeah, there are Thank children, you. there are generations that will come and watch some of these things, and I say, wow, I learned this thing from video that talks <laughs> on on mm. like you, know, mm -hmm. you know, like you go sometimes you just quote somebody that, that yeah. are no longer and just quote him and just put it on your Facebook page. So these are these are. These are assets that you are basically creating. Thank you so much. Mm. So, yeah. so please keep doing what you are doing. There are other topics you can talk about. Uh, yeah, yeah. absolutely. In the office. <laughs> yeah. Uh, but I also do, uh, do it yourself. Even car. Yeah. I can change my car brake. If I don't have it, I have it. But uh, what I would say is, if you need to fix something, check YouTube first. If you are having a problem with your with anything, even in the house, in your car, check YouTube for, for there is a chance, at least a 50, 60 percent chance that somebody has had that problem. You know, in Nigeria, we say yeah. to there is no problem that you have <laughs> in your house or in your car that somebody has not experienced. I'm telling you, especially um, if you have, if you have, if you have a car that is not a brand new, that you don't even be a brand new model car, they just change some of the design and the interior, the, the internal functions are still basically the same thing. So check YouTube first, search YouTube, get the knowledge. If you know you can do it, you don't know how to do it, then you can, you can consult uh, people that want to do it. Thanks so yeah. much. <laughs> Thanks so much. Once again, for taking time out of your busy schedule to this interview, uh, I'm sure that um, our viewers are going to learn a lot of things that from what we have shared uh, today. Uh, and to our viewers, uh, we want to hear from you. Tell us what you've learned. See you next time. God bless you. Bye.